Yeah, good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all bring it on in. Let me know if I'm too loud in your headphones. No, you good. So I because I can't really hear nothing. She got see she and y'all see she on the good side of the camera today, huh? <laughs> Took my side, the music playing. I'm over here. I didn't have to renege my dog on setup, but you know it's fine. We're gonna wait for some more y'all to come up over here. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Got a very interesting conversation today. What it's gonna be about, I don't know yet. But it's gonna be very interesting. Good morning, I'm seeing some faces come up in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Special guest Miss Miss Days is in the building. Ding, 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 ding. Miss Days is in the building, y'all. We about to get it started. We about to get it started. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I see hearts. I see hearts. Who that? Oh, Dion. Good morning, Dion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shout out to the to the song questions that almost got finished last night. Shout out to On Go Mode that's being played right now. That's gonna be uh in on platforms. Uh, God knows when. Good morning, Tasha. Good morning. I see you in. I see you tuning in. Good morning. Oh, we look like a, a natural black couple. Boy, look at that. Dre's in the fro. Y'all, she gonna be grilling me all day. Y'all pray for me. Good morning, everybody. We got special guests, my lovely lady, Miss Christina, in the building today. But before we get started, y'all know how we normally do. We're gonna do our. Uh, let me know how it sounds on y'all end too. It's a different type of setup I got going on today. But um, we're gonna start with our normal morning affirmation. So I start the phrase, and you guys finish it on your end. So example, if I say I am, and you need strength today, you say strong. If I say I need, and you need money today, you know, you say I am abundant. I am attracting money. That's how we normally do it. So I am healing. Ooh, I need. Elderberry. <laughs> I will be. Well. And I receive. Money. <laughs> good morning, y'all. What's up, Fantasia? Good to see y'all in the building. Fantasia, I'm going to call you and, uh, she say, I don't know if you can see it. Hey. Oh, I'm going to uh, call you and, uh, Andre later on today. Well, after this, because we got to make up for yesterday. Um, I got, I got busy. I got busy. Good morning, Kendall. Kendall, Kendall, look, my lady. This is my lady. Kendall, look, look, look. See, look, I got a lady, too. I got a pretty lady, too. <laughs> uh, but good morning. Good morning, Miss Miss Days. I got, I got out of bed, y'all. I got her out of bed. What's going on, Kayla? Good morning. See, everybody, everybody just pulling in. I love it. Okay, on the good side. What's going on, Andre? Everybody pulling in this morning. Uh-huh. Good old Saturday. Yeah. Morning. Need to go live on Saturday more often. But, um, yeah, look, Andre. <laughs> He put he did them little eyes up in there. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in before we get started. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I talked to Amber about it and I talked to Dion about it the other day. But we finally averaged. I looked at the insights. We're averaging the double digits. We have, The audience has now officially just packed past 10. Hopefully we could go. What's up? No, Co- that's cool. Go up in there. We were just talking to Cole this morning. What's up? Um, oh, yeah, Cole. This, this Amber. But, um, yeah, we're about to start averaging at least 20 to 25 people. Um, in the stream, but like overall, it's gonna get to like I think about 40 45. So, y'all keep sharing, keep doing what y'all been doing, it's really appreciated. And we really trying to take this podcast to the next level. But I got my special guest in the building, I ain't gonna talk too much longer. So, what you want to talk about first? We could we could talk about the, our origin story, we could talk about you being a dog mom now. What you want to talk about? Oh. And let me know if y'all can hear you. <laughs> Our origin story. I feel as though you twisted around too much. So, so she's saying I'm capping. So she feel as though I'm capping about. So, will you tell a story then? How the story go? Well, our origin story is she about to lie. <laughs> we've been knowing each other since grade school. Mm-hmm. We were always in separate like social groups. He was in band. I was. You was what? Because you setting it up like bad. Like what? What? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying. Like, I'm trying to figure out what group I was in. <laughs> but she said we in two CC. See so what I'm saying? It was. So I'm saying. You know, she don't want to accept the fact that I was cool, man. I was out here <laughs> cool with the cool kids. But go ahead, continue your little story. You were very whatever. busy, and you always had a girlfriend. So let's not. She lying, y'all. She <laughs> lying. She my first girlfriend. She lying. I don't know what she talking about. Anyway, and that's how he wants you to proceed. He did not have a girlfriend <laughs> until, let's see, three years ago? So Dang. Yeah. No, I was single before that. 
Mm, yeah. I was single for like a year, some change before that. I know. And, and, and that's, between... what I'm, that's what I'm saying. You're saying you were single for all these years. <laughs> okay. So. Dang, I just told on myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So. Hey, Jazz, I see you in here. So it was 2017? No, it was 2018. 18. 2018. Yeah, because I had just moved back home. Um, I got it when she came back, too. Yeah, because I was. um I had left our hometown for like five years and apparently he had been trying to get in contact with me yeah but i didn't really have social media like she that. still don't have social media i do have social media i just have taken a hiatus from social media um i'll be back soon <laughs> y'all see my face huh <laughs> <laughs> but um he dm'd my friend my best friend and um that's kind of how the connection started you gotta and be relentless my brothers you gotta be <laughs> relentless remember she said grade school up until now and she only didn't get snatched before that because she was out of the state i mean out of the city so i mean you know i did what i had to do so once i got on social media he dm'd me um and it kind of just went from there we conversated we had our first date in like the first week of us what you remember talking. about the first date what you remember we went to another broken egg which is one of our favorite breakfast spots mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we still go there a lot um and it was like a lot of things were just lining up for that day i remember because we were very casual um and at first, we wasn't about to get seated, but then, like, I think that right. was one of the owners that was like, oh, well, you could sit at the bar, so, you know, we just sat at the bar. Which is my favorite spot to be, because them children be too loud in the doggone middle spot, but <laughs> that's another conversation. That is another conversation. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we, we ate... We even ate off each other's plate a little bit. For the first time. You got to see, fellas, you got to show them. <laughs> she said, yeah, take notes, Dion. You got to show them that I don't mind sharing. I don't mind. See, what's mine is yours. It was a front, but you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's not, it's not that I don't like sharing my food. I just don't like to be touched while I'm eating. But, you know, I didn't grow out of that. I'm better. I'm a better person now. Three years down the line. Better. I'm a better person. You gotta man. keep improving. You know, the the basics. And now he let me eat his whole plate. Now, <sighs> so y'all, after y'all pray we for were me. done eating, um, we basically walked around the whole area where mm-hmm. um, the restaurant is, and we just talked and conversated. And I guess it was the test because we had had like really cool casual good conversations on the phone so to see it in person <laughs> i'm thinking about one thing in particular what i don't the running joke i kept telling you oh yeah we ain't gonna we can't bring that up on here but yeah, just know it's something funny yeah, can't i believed it and i went along with it <laughs> that's how i ain't gonna go into detail but that's how i knew she really wanted to be with me because there was a joke I think Jordan probably the only person. Jordan and Jim might be the only two people that really know about it. Well, that was there when it happened. Yeah. And, like, I kept saying it for the longest. I ain't going to say what it was, y'all. We can't, it's, it's not for children. It's, it's not. But <laughs> she ran with it. <laughs> and guess what? It worked. So that's how I knew she really wanted to be with me. Yeah, it was something else. Aww. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that. girl. I was so and surprised happy you. when I found out it was not true. See, we can't really talk about it. So, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but it was um, it was very just. I can't even think of a word right now. It was not in liberating, but it was like it was very. Were oh, you finding out that it was? No, 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 no. no. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't switch subjects. <laughs> when it was just like the way we were on the phone was the way we was in person. Mm-hmm. So you know there wasn't like any fakeness so with Dion as my witness but i'm gonna ask you this question do i have game yes or no game um i mean you always say you don't have game because i really don't believe i have game i really don't y'all but i would say you don't have a rehearsed game you don't have to like you know come up with this big old story or this big old way of going about things you simply be yourself and i guess that's your game and look what i got 
about being myself. See what I'm saying, y'all? Y'all ain't gotta fake it till you make it. Just be yourself, and you get you too can have the very own Christina doll for 19.99 plus shipping and handling. No, see, it was it's black. It was a Black Friday sale, so don't. No, I don't want nobody thinking she cheap. She not cheap, y'all. <laughs> Add a cent, make me a bill. You know, something like that. Okay, let me see. We coming up with questions on the spot, y'all, because you know I'm just nervous. You know, y'all don't normally see me this nervous on the camera, but she up in here, so now I gotta put on my good face. Mm -hmm. But okay, so we didn't been okay. I don't have game. <laughs> All right, we've been knowing each other since, <laughs> since we were small. I finally got you. Okay, which what would you say? Well, now let's go into like the the relation. You know, like we always talk about how they have we have like the ups, not the ups and downs, but like. You know, going through like the puppy dog phase or the love, the whatever phase, and then getting into like the real part of the relationship. What was that like for you coming coming out of like you know our? Even though I still feel like we still in it, but like coming out of our like kind of oh I'm getting to know you, experiment all that type of stuff phase until like okay being consistent because we made three years. What that was last week, a week before. That was two weeks ago. That was two weeks ago. We made three years, niggas. <laughs> um. Well, I would say. It is a transition, but I mean, you're constantly transitioning in a relationship. You just don't really realize it. Um, and it's the day-to-day -day things. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what you're willing to deal with. You see what you're not willing to deal with. So what you're willing to deal with? Let the, let the world know what you're willing to deal with. Willing to deal with you? <laughs> no, but like, it's, you know, specifically. Oh, um, I mean, I don't know. I think that's a loaded question. I be burping in her face on purpose, y'all. I be picking with her. I be doing. I be doing the dumbest. So what he said? He said this dude is it is a. Oh no, Corey, we gotta fight, and I'm gonna see you today too. We gotta fight. <laughs> <laughs> but I would. The, the thing that comes to the top of my mind is the when you move in with somebody. Oh, what as, was that? Let's talk about as that. As far as the relationship goes, when you move in with somebody, it is. That is a change of pace because you start to realize certain things about your partner, certain things about yourself, mm -hmm. certain things that you need to change on both parts. Yeah. Oh, and ooh. that was not that was not a point. <laughs> that was the microphone. Yes, it was the microphone. <laughs> um, but you realize those things that you have to work on and some things are going to be a constant work and you just have to understand or just more realize if you're willing to do such work to Ooh. deal with it so one wanting wanting to commit and stay inside of a relationship despite of well i guess separate like i said before in a few a few podcasts ago um separating the reality from the fantasy yes now do you deem that a lot of people can be like well i don't want to separate it because it kills the joy of the relationship what is that in the third do you like how do you feel about that not transition but like that process I mean, I feel as though realism is, at least for me, is the best way to go about things. Because it's like, at the end of the day, I don't want to wake up from a fantasy and just be so flabbergasted that, oh my goodness, what happened? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, And it's not what you thought you was in. Yeah, like, no, you need to live in reality. You can't be saying, oh, he this, oh, I'm this and I'm doing this and... He eventually gonna do this. No, because <laughs> the, the likelihood is that he won't. Because you're not actively working at it. Because you're still living in a fantasy. See and see that. And look, none of this is rehearsal. I asked her if yesterday she wanted to be on the show today. So it's not like I told her what to say, nothing like that. But that just goes back to what I said. Like I think I was last week on the podcast when I was talking about, um, basically, essentially just having. One, having a partner that's going to be a good fit for you, obviously. But at the same time, you know, like being having somebody that you can be real with and being real with that person as you go through the relationship. So it can last. It can be better and it can and it can really move forward to the, the next level, I guess you can say. So what's how can I put this question without making it sound a certain type of way? Mm. What what would you consider a method or a practice that somebody can use or come up with, even though it's going to be person to person? To get through that process. Because I feel like everybody has to go through that process in relationships. I mean, the first step for, I think, most things is going to be just being honest. With yourself or your partner or both? Both. I mean, you need to be honest with yourself first. Mm -hmm. To be honest with your partner. Um, 
but if you're in denial about certain things, about the reality of what your relationship is, it can never get better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say the first step is honesty. That's, a, that's always a great place to start. And, you know, sometimes things aren't always going to be as clear as you think. So it may take some time to realize, you know, oh, this, I thought it was this, but it's really this, you know. And, you know, it's those points where it's like you have to, then you have to be really honest with yourself. Well, what am I willing to do from here? You know, Mm -hmm. are we willing to work at this or is this a one-sided thing? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean... Typically, you know, everybody wants a relationship to be 50-50. And, you know, that's not always going to be the case. Right. It's really not, you know. So, you know, where you're lacking a certain part, your partner should meet you beyond halfway. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. You know, everybody's not going to be at 50-50. Some people are at 80 in certain right. parts. And some people are at 20. Because I could be stubborn. I'm going to just put it out there. Y'all know me. I could be stubborn. And I shout out to Amber for dealing with my stubbornness because it'd be taking a long time for me to see the light sometimes. Because she, you know how long she's been telling me, Brian, you wearing too many hats. Brian, you're doing, you overdoing it. You're overworking this, that, and the third. I'm like, oh, I got it. And then it, I almost crash and burn. And then here she come picking me up like a bad child with silver caps. Come bring your behind over here. What I told you. I told you that you was doing too doggone much. But that's essentially what she's getting at. Like, But you know what the crazy part is? It's like, you know. He's great at whatever he puts his mind to. He just sometimes puts everything on his mind. That's because I don't don't know. I'm a productive. Y'all know me. I'm a productive type of person. I like results. I like I like things. So if like if I if I I like to figure stuff out, like if I can't figure it out, I'm going to figure it out. And if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to know what I'm doing by next month. I'm going to study it. I don't know. I guess that's my downfall, like my Achilles heel, because. It was, for me, it was kind of scary at first because I know, even though and me and Amber already had this talk, so I don't want none of y'all thinking me, me and her got problems with what I'm about to say because we've already been through this discussion. But like like I said before, living up to be the man that I know that I wanted to be for you and that I know what you expected out of me, you know, and trying to rush those results even though I didn't have that. Well, but and but years down the road now, seeing who, like what I'm into now, that the work that I've been putting into, the long game work that I've been putting into is finally propelling me forward into that type of person but it took me having to take those hats off and really like i mean really listen to you to really get to this point because that's one thing man if a lady if a lady telling you if your chick telling you like okay you need to do this do that in the third or like really trying to help you in certain situations just listen don't be stubborn because like you'll slow down like if i would have really been like really 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 caught what she said like a year ago no telling where i would have been now granted i'm grateful for where i'm at now but it's like no telling what would have what would have been moving at. There would have been a different type of perpetuation going on, well, propelling force going on right now in my life, you know. But overall, I'm still thankful to even have somebody like this because she's very perceptive. That's which brings me to another question: How important is it, or do you feel like most women? Okay, I'll tell you what. I got I word this the right way. Mm-hmm. There's nurturing and there's protect. There's protecting. What do you feel like is more important in a relationship from a man to a woman? I mean, from a woman to a man. Versus nurturing versus protection. Mm-hmm. For example, like you take very good care of me, but at the same time, you're you're insight you're insightful, and you can see things that I can't. Oftentimes, reasons why you have become my eyes on a lot of situations. I feel as though it depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes, I mean. Nobody is a one fit all, you know. Sometimes people need nurturing at a certain point. Sometimes people do need protection, you know. And it's not a one fits all type of thing. Um, so, I guess. That hmm, okay. <laughs> so, we're going to move to the next topic. I just thought about something. I want to ask this question in front of y'all. What is it like being in love? I know it's a loaded question. It is a loaded question, but I would say it is, if you've never experienced it before, it can be very overwhelming. And you can question a lot about it because it's very unfamiliar. Do you want to dive into your perspective of that or you want to skip that? Um, 
my perspective of love. And you saying like the fearful part of it and all that. I mean, I guess I guess I was already dying. <laughs> I didn't know how far you was gonna go. <laughs> um, but you know, it took me, you know. Even though I knew I loved him from a very early point, I it took me a while to realize that I was in love. Um, and I feel as though that's only because... Honestly, I don't know why that is the case. I think, you know, it's just the way I was... The way I'm built. Um, but... I would say going through life day to day with a person and just realizing that, you know, yes, I want to do this life thing with this person, you know, Mm. I think that's when I really realized that I was in love, you know, because I am a very, I'm I'm a very lone wolf type of person. And I love it. I have, I don't have a lot of friends, um. And we don't need a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. Don't be trying to slide in her DMs that she don't have. Like, I <laughs> I do prefer a lot of alone time. With me. <laughs> and I do I do prefer a lot of alone time <laughs> with him. But, you know, realizing that whole aspect about myself and realizing that I was willing to be alone with him mm-hmm. <laughs> was like the test of just, I guess, me being like, okay... You can really be with this person because we wouldn't have lasted three years. Yeah. <laughs> if that wasn't the case. Yeah. And it's ironic because we both could be. Good morning, y'all. I'm just seeing all these new people coming in. Good morning, everybody. Um, We both. I, ain't go, I don't want to. I'm going to say the word clingy for lack of better terms, but we both can be kind of clingy with each other. But, it, it, but not in an unhealthy, bad way. It's more so like you see how she's talking about kind of what I talked about a few weeks ago. Um making sure you you're okay with being by yourself and watching who you let in your space and intimately you know and like especially when you're living with somebody or trying to live and, and create a life with somebody you know it's one of those things to where you really 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 have to be okay with being by yourself first because i i never saw that even though a lot of people can see that as a flaw where she likes to be by herself and she don't like to be around people blah 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 like i never saw that as a flaw but i always did see that as somebody who's okay with like you know, being by themselves and they have a great sense of solitude because a lot of things that drive people crazy these days is that they don't know how to be by themselves. They don't know how to be happy single. They don't know how to be happy just by themselves. They don't know how to spend time by themselves off. But I feel as though they're running from themselves. You know, it's like you don't want to face certain parts of yourself or it's one of those situations to where like you just haven't had the time to really because that that's one thing I'll probably say I'm glad I had to. Well, I had to learn before I started dating you, because even though I, I didn't really mind being by myself and being, you know, in my room and like making music and stuff like that relationship wise. I mean, you can you could tell when we first started dating it's like I'm one of those people to like I want to show you that I care and I'm there and this, that and the third. So it's like I'm a. I was working. I was working at the airport at the time, huh? Yeah. So like, I would come off of these twelve-hour shifts. It's like one, two o'clock in the morning. I'm driving. And granted, I had a whole apartment with my homeboys in Lafayette and everything. I would drive from the airport just to go to her house and just to go spend a few hours because I had to be up early the next morning just to come right back to the airport. But like, I'm coming over. I'm bringing clothes. You know, like I'm going. I'm showing her that. Like, even though we not, we talking on the phone all day, we texting all day, but I'm still. You know, I'm an effort type of person. You know, so. I had to learn early on that just because, you know, like I would feel bad sometimes for, I don't think I ever told you this. I I used to feel bad sometimes for like being so tired after work, after working so much and just wanting to go to my apartment sometimes and just like sleep and not talk to nobody. But I was like, dang, I didn't want to neglect you, you know, but I, but it took me learning you and learning myself that is like, okay, one, she has to understand that we, I need a break, you know, and then like, I need time to myself, but I, but I also have to understand that she doesn't require you to be there every breaking moment, you know, every waking, even though, you know, we've, we live together now and like, mm-hmm. it's, a, I love it. Y'all, when she be leaving and she be going on these trips or she be going with like her sister or somebody to go do something in New Orleans or whatever, I have the hardest time sleeping. I really do. I like, y'all was in New Orleans. I didn't go sleep till like what, three, four o'clock in the morning. No one, I had to be up like two hours after that. But I don't know. It's like I had to learn how to like I had to learn that space isn't a bad thing. 
you know, but like when you finally get what you want and you finally get the ideal person for you, you try to do everything in your power to like, you know, like really keep them like the effort. At least on, that's what I do. My effort is hard. My me want to reach every goal for, you know, like that. That's what I thrive off of when it comes down to keeping her. But I've learned throughout the years that like the more I'm able to be, I guess, myself in a sense, because I feel like that in a sense, I was kind of inhibiting pieces of myself because it's the early stages of our relationship. You know, and it's like you're seeing me always there, always doing so like say I was to start doing it. Well, not say pulling back, but taking my space in an unhealthy way because I crash Mm -hmm. rather than having to, you know, have some understanding behind it. It can come off as toxic or it could come out, come off as, oh, he ain't feeling me no more. So but rather than if I were to start it off because I didn't have the communication skills that I have, but just starting off like, you know, not really like just being by you. But it's like I just fall back and with no explanation. You know, I think. When I think about it, I think one of the things that really helped us in, like, our relationship when when we first moved in was the fact that we did have separate areas. Yes. And she was adamant on that. Um, So, we had, like, we have a two-bedroom house. And um, each room, instead of turning it into a traditional Mm -hmm. bedroom, um, we each had our own workspace, you know, creative space. So, he had his studio have my area where I just do whatever Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um we had a very large living room Mm because I know your part one and where did y'all sleep (laughs) (laughs) we slept outside (laughs) (laughs) we had a very large living room so we had our bed in the front sort of like a studio setup Mm -hmm. um and that's how we kept it for like a year a year and a half a year and a half yeah yeah, because we just we, we just, just put yeah, yeah we, we just, just put everything back. We just moved the bed into one of the mm-hmm. one, into my old room. Um, Since she's talking about spaces for creation, what is it that you do, Miss Christina? Well, you know, I think that was one of the reasons why I was just like really okay with giving up my creative space because I realized that. I'm not going to say my space was too small, but it was a confined space Mm -hmm. for what I do. You know, I do need to be close to the outside Mm -hmm. um, to really work on what I do. And, like, I do woodwork, DIY stuff. Um, I build. I sew. I do basically anything I can do with my hands, I will attempt to do. I'm about to beef this up. (laughs) Shawty could build anything. <laughs> Shawty didn't build closets. She didn't. She building this table thing and doggone. See, that's the, and I talked about this a few weeks ago. It's hard having Bob the Builder as a girlfriend and you the, and you the man in the relationship because she don't be like Brian. Can you help me screw this in, Brian? She be like, Hey, Brian, I need your help. Look at me. Oh yeah, come help her build something. Hold this up. And I'm holding no something. She just wing, 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 and she going in. That girl could build anything, bro. Like she could build whatever she put her mind to, and could dress. We're not gonna sleep on the, on the on the fashion. Like you go on her page, you'll see like the outfits she do and all that all that type of stuff. Like her DIYs with her costumes and all of that. Like she really took. Like see y'all seeing the product. Y'all don't see what I was going through in the house of her having to put these. Co- Who do you think was taking these pictures? Cause I do, I'm not. Let me tell y'all something. I'm not good at taking pictures at all. I only got somewhat of a sense. Of, I got better because she kept fussing at me, and I and I got tired of getting fussed at. Cause look, <laughs> I'm not a child. But <laughs> but we, you know what? That's how I knew I was sick of it. I had I started screaming on the. Uh, we have like a Roku TV in the living room. I was like, uh, uh-uh, you ain't about to be fussing at me for these angles like that. I don't know what I, how I'm getting what I'm supposed to be doing. I had uh screen mirrored the the camera to the TV so she could see her poses and all of that. And I, she just let me know when to snap it. I'm, I'm on there on the floor like this, click click, no, click click, click click. Cause look, I'm not I'm not good with photos, but I got better. But all of but but I say I like to say like you know from her YouTube that she's about to start revamping to um like all the fast stuff she was doing, the stuff that she can create. Like I'm not the only one, in, and that's what I love about that's but that's what I'm talking about as far as like being balanced with your partner. Like I said a few weeks ago, like. I know I have a multi-million dollar business that's, you know, that's about to do its thing. And once it gets in the right hands and I learn more things, but she's also, you know, and then we're not even going to get started on her eye for real estate. Like when it comes out to designing and how she sees, like, I didn't really have a good sense of like real estate blueprints and all that type of stuff until I started dating her. I had an idea of things. I had ideas of how I want to do things, but now like she's an amazing visionary. It's like, we'll talk about something. 
and she'll tell you, well, no, you got to build this like this, and this is going to go here. You design this and move this. Because what's that show we be watching? The the um the fixer the, uppers. The, the, you talking about the old man? That's one of them. The dude with the hat, and they got the the, preg- the lady that was pregnant. Oh, that's some um, good bones. Good bones. That good, good bones is which ones? That's the pregnant lady. <laughs> and the dude with the hat. Restored. We watch. Amber had me watching them shows every day. I come back from training the client. Guess what's on TV? I come back from training the dogs. Guess what's on TV? And at first, I was like, man, I'm gonna be on my phone. I don't feel like watching this right now. But then now I'm the person. Hey, what they doing with this house? What they doing with that? What's the next thing with that? And have a new appreciation for it. But that's the beauty in her talent. You know, like she'll she'll take stuff like that and she'll bring it into our uh our own lives of as far as like what we got going in our real world and like the plans that we got for the future and stuff like that like she's just she said it how she want to say it but that's how i feel about her talents because i know what i see you know and i know what she can and can't do but well, i'm saying i know what you can and can't do but i don't know if i gotta fix this bye, y'all, bye, y'all. <laughs> please let me know if y'all can say here i have to cut some stuff on and on real quick you can say him in the headphones yeah I can say okay cool um, but yeah, that's that's just some of that's some of the stuff she could do because listen, that's the person I really be talking to about life because that's my that's my partner that's my partner for real. She taught me she told me I have a juice problem, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working. See, I don't drink soda. Like I don't really be doing soda and all that type of stuff. But I'll tell down some juice. She be like, y'all drink a juice or something. But but it's not a bad thing, you know. I like I like my juice. I just like my juice. Let's see what else we could talk about. I, I you know what, and I have a problem, and I'm working on it. <laughs> We're not gonna shame me up in here. You're right. But you healthy for the most part. <laughs> now she she's new to this dog life. I've been having dogs since I was a kid. So we tell them tell them the tell them the dog story. Well, Brian has always wanted golden doodles. Yes. And um, one of the many well, one breed of the many breeds we're gonna have. And he like he really have been talking about it since we first got together. Yes. Like, and me coming from just not having dogs, I was like, what's so special about these dang dogs? Mm-hmm. But then it came a point, we, we got them this year. Yeah, we got them. We got them. June? Some, cause, yeah, because they were born in May. Yeah, we got them in June. But it just so happened that this lady was selling these golden doodles, and she was selling them at a really good price. Yes, and extremely. we were supposed to... Truly only get one, but she... <laughs> I wonder why we got two. But, I wonder why. <laughs> but she had two left, and they had been basically together. bonding mm-hmm. together that whole time period while the others was getting sold. And I was just like, let's just get both of them. Let's keep them together. They're sisters. They're sisters. Child, y'all, this has been great. They better now. The only thing we got left, because they still puppies. They, they, I know for the people that have met my dogs, my dogs are huge. They are really big, but and they, but they still puppies. And it's like they, how can I put it? All we have left is recall training and jumping training because they just they like to jump on everything and they don't realize they're huge and they like to jump on stuff and be ex Cree. Every time Cree come here, they want to just go crazy with the with the dog on uh the client. But they they're better now. But when we first got them, it was it was a process because she 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 would not she wasn't used to having dogs. And we didn't just get any type of dogs. We got one of the most active breeds you can possibly get. And I see now they have their own space. We've come, we've got them in like the other half of the house. Mm-hmm. But before they was just kind of all over and you know training and this that and the third. Y'all, it was stressful. I ain't gonna lie. Even for me, it was stressful because like we had to go through the potty training phase. And like good thing I had good thing we both have. Well now now she do her thing at, at Generate, but. You know, we both had the the, the freedom. Yeah, I'll yeah. say that to be at home with the dogs and really take time with them. But bruh, I'm talking about from the diarrhea phase yeah, to the th- that was the worst phase. Lonnie had caught a bug. I don't know from where, from how, because we wasn't taking them nowhere. She was throwing up all over the kennel, everywhere. pooing everywhere, and we have Amber. If y'all know me. I like tapestries and carpets and stuff like that. Amber got these fire carpets in the living room. If y'all been to my house, y'all know what I'm talking about. And Lonnie was just spraying it up. It was so disgusting, y'all, and the smell. It took us so long to get that smell up out this house. But we got through that. We got through the little... The, the, they still... They don't tease as much because they go outside and play with each other a lot. 
like for some reason they really attracted to wood right now and i don't know why but they love mm-hmm. chewing and, and like just destroying wood and i'll be doing my little bonfires out, outside and like when i would throw my ashes or like the wood chips like to the corner of the yard or like where the last place it was i'm gonna put it up back there anyway they find they feel like it's just the, the best time to just come and just eat all all the doggone wood chips and now they they stuff be coming out black I'm sitting there thinking I had to take my dog to the vet, but then I hear a crunch coming from across. I'm like, I didn't get no dogs, no treats or nothing like that. They tan up the firewood, which makes no dog on sense. But we got the most rambunctious little two. And I, I love them now, granted. I have a favorite. I ain't going to say it because she could hear me. It's been a process. I have a favorite. Who are your, who are your favorite? Um, I got a favorite too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They always lie when they say they ain't got a favorite. And Everybody lying. got a favorite. Children, dogs. Mm-hmm. Who your favorite? Um, I will not say because parents should never say who their favorite. She, her favorite is Lonnie. That's my favorite too. Cause, <laughs> cause Lonnie just chill. Lonnie, like they didn't got. I feel as though, which you know, I feel as though favorites will change as the years go on. Cause you know, we gonna see. I feel, I do feel that way. Cause, bro, Cosmo has this thing now to where, like, they're t- they're so tall, y'all. Like, when they stand up, they almost like right here on me, and I'm not short, you know. And it's like whenever they go towards like the kitchen area, Cosmo has this new thing she does to where the everything looks new to her now, cause like they they're still growing. So it's like, oh, I've never seen this part of the counter before. She jump well, she doesn't jump on the counter, but like she'll stand up and put her paws on the counter, and she will be like, what y'all got going on right here? And we'll look at every pot and don't leave no food out because she's going to get it. And I, I just don't know what she got with that. And I, we're trying to we trying to break it, y'all. We're trying to break up out of that. With all that being said, it has been a process. And yes. coming from somebody, huh, <coughs> for one, I, I knew I wanted a dog, but I never was really raised in a household to know what it was really doing like with a dog. So it was a it was a change of pace, and um, coming from us, you know, we don't really know if we want kids yet. I'm on I'm on the no side right now. Um, I'm just a strong no for me. <laughs> so it's like you know, those dogs. That's the look. They started to get. The <laughs> there was a point where it was like, okay, no kids, no dogs. <laughs> And it is what it is, because look, you only got patience for so much. I'm not about to sit here and stunt like, you know, oh, I don't want children right now. I'm not ready for no child. These dogs is enough. These puppies is is enough. And hopefully, when well, I say hopefully, but like when they're going to get like full grown and their brain's going to like adapt to stuff, you know, it's going to get better. But I mean, you still got to, just like with kids, you got to repetition every day with them dogs. You would figure they would understand, stop jumping around while I'm trying to feed, put the food in the bowl. Let's get off the counter and, and chill out, lay down. Like, no. And, they, and we take them out a lot. They go outside, they will play outside for hours and still come back inside and want to tear the house up sometimes. But we love them. Yeah. You know, you, you, you got to love your children, like they say. Yes, it was Let me see what time It is. was a process, though. We got 20 it, minutes. It took us, because I'm not going to lie, there was almost a breaking point. <laughs> see, I wasn't going to break that up, but I mean, you bringing it up, I mean, I'm going to let you talk about I it. I don't mind talking about it. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, there was a breaking point. I was like, oh, no. Look, we made a mistake. <laughs> we made a mistake. And she wanted the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, I did want the dogs, <laughs> but you wanted the dogs too. You've been wanting them names. Yes, yes. And, that, and yes. you know that goes to show, like when you do things for your partner and you don't really know if you want these things. You gotta pay for your decisions. And you have. Well, I could look. They dogs, and I, they're not children. Oh. Somebody would have bought them. <laughs> we just had to reconfigure the house. <laughs> Yes, we you have know. to reconfigure the house because I don't. I didn't like the idea of my whole house being taken over. Mm-hmm. Like, we we do let them in, come and go through the house at certain points, but all day, every day? No. 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 What's up, booby? No. I'm just, you know, other people can do that. I can't. And, you know, that to each his own. <laughs> you know, um. The house is more peaceful. The, the, more the peaceful. dogs are more controlled. You know, is is dope. It's, and it's not. I don't want nobody to sound like oh, it's a dictatorship. They have dogs they don't want. But I like, I don't care what people think at the end of the day. 
Honestly and truly, y'all can think it's a dictatorship all y'all want, <laughs> but we got a peaceful household. That's what I do know. We do. We do. People come here just to take naps, a.k.a. Joy, a.k.a. Bree. Dion got a piece of that sofa that was, that was last month or somewhere around that. Dion came. Who? I can't think. Oh, look, almost everybody that comes to house has taken naps. Miles. Yeah. Miles, Miles came over, and Miles, yeah. Miles passed out drooling on the sofa. We got one of the most peaceful houses, but it took a lot of work. A lot of prayer, a lot of moving and rearranging of the house. But we got, we got like, I think, fifteen more minutes. I don't want to be here too, too, too long. You, you, you can ask me some questions. Okay. You can take over the All show. Right, I'm taking over. Yeah, I don't think I'm ready for these questions. <laughs> so, what was one thing that you had to learn to deal with me? I haven't had a partner that knew what she wanted. It's like I I had a partner. Well, I, I've dated people that like know what they want, but it's more so like they know what they want from how can I put it from men in a in a, a very fantasy type thing. Like the expectations weren't realistic. Mm-hmm. I didn't. When I say I hate to say dealing with you, but like dealing with you was uh, it's it's a it's an easier process, but it's a it's a natural process. I don't feel like you pushing me to be something that I can't be. Are you? I don't feel like you pushing me to be the type of the type of man that that just can't. I don't know. It's like it just feels natural, you know. And like whenever you do apply pressure or you do talk to me about certain things or we have to go through certain things, it's, it's not like I don't. I rarely feel like oh, this is the end. In other relationships, it was like I'm scared to argue and really, even though I'll say what I want to say, but like I'm scared to really argue because like well, I'll lose this person. But with you, is like I really understand now that i with with my partner i should be able to not argue in the sense but like really say how i feel mm-hmm. in the moment you know well as controlled as possible you don't want to just blast off on your partner but like really say what i need to say express myself and vice versa and it don't feel like the end of the world it don't feel like stuff is like ending or or i can't be myself around you and i feel like that i'm real grateful for that you know and i i don't know it's like i don't know if this is i don't it's not. Look, how about I'm going to answer my own question. It's not typical. Because, like, even in when we do have disagreements and we do argue, um, it's never, like, to the point where it's like, oh, my God, I'm leaving. <laughs> it's never. You know what? Even though sometimes it be feeling like that in in real in. In real life, is it never gets to that point. It never really. Um, because we don't argue about. I don't. Know, I guess that's just type of relationship we have. We don't really argue about stuff like that. We don't. We don't let stuff get to that point. Yeah, because I I feel as though most of our issues are either petty or internal. Typically petty because <laughs> we both we both some petty people. We are some real. We can be petty with each other like, and and we won't we won't revenge. Like, That's our downfall. If we busted, <laughs> it's because this dish was left on the counter, or it could be at. That's real simple, but it could be like, oh, my day is just not. Just don't don't mess with me today. I'm and, not doing good. And today. I and I had to learn that y'all because <laughs> like I'm the. You know, if I see if I see my partner like really stressed out and really going through it, like I want to be there. I want to be in your face. I want to cuddle. I want to this that. Oh, look, how can I make it better? She not like that. She she not like that all the time. Mm-hmm. She's she's one of the people to where it's like I have my routine. Let me do my routine. Let me deal with this that and the third, and then I'm going to do what I feel as though is necessary for me to actually move forward or do something. But I think that's I think that's. Just learning your partner because it was natural for him to want to console me and cuddle and those type of things because that's what he thought I would have wanted. Mm-hmm. And you know, until I got jabbed. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just not like that. And on the other hand, you know, I had to learn to, I'm not going to say be more affectionate, but just like, that love language, because we have different love languages. What, what is, what's our love languages? Because we talked about this a few podcasts ago. Well, I don't know the exact, I can't think of the exact, I know there's like... It's active service, it's um, physical touch, you have quality time, and you have gift giving. And there's another one too, I don't yeah, remember there, right now. there's five. There's five. Um, I know your gift and physical. Yes. Your gift and physical. Touch me. <laughs> um... 
But you, no, it's signs of affirmation. Or is it that's like, a, yeah, that's words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Yeah, he's words of affirmation. And, Talk to me. And I am not. Words of affirmation is. <laughs> <laughs> words of affirmation is like my bottom one. <laughs> hey, Amber, what's going on? Figure it out. Nothing. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. You want to go get some ice cream? Sure. I should be sitting there like, well, what I'm, what I'm supposed to do? I don't know what to do. I am acts of service. Mm-hmm. And so I made that. You know, I helped you with them sloppy joes last night. I can't get. Well, I didn't help, but she cooked it everything. But you know, I can't. I slid. Up, I want another one. Wow! I went fix the plate. Yes, you did. That was really nice. That was nice, that huh? Was nice. But you know, yeah, I had to learn to adjust just with my words. Because you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, keep talking, keep, keep talking. <laughs> let them, let them know what you had to adjust, what you had to do. Because you know, I, I'm, I'm, just, that's just not my lane. And you know, but when you're with somebody where that is their lane, mm-hmm. you have to find your way to get to them some way. So you know, I had to learn to be more vocal because I knew that's the way he would understand. And you know. Just because I didn't want to, that does, that's not an excuse not to do it. Because you're going to talk to me. <laughs> you're going to talk to me because who can play this game? Because the, I mean, the all, at the end of it all, I wanted to make him understand. And if I have to do this to make him understand, then, you know, it is what it is. Now, now what kind of sense does that make? I want to make you understand, but I don't want to talk. <laughs> I want you to no, like she want to read my mind type of chick. Now, granted, I'm getting better at it. I can read your mind now. I'm getting better. Am I not getting better? You are getting better. I'm getting better. a lot better. Because look, at first, <laughs> bro, it was it was hell. Like it was hell in high water. I didn't know what to do. I was panicking. It was tough. But now, I think oh, my yeah. actions show more if you actually pay attention. So I wasn't paying attention. No, no, no I'm not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying with you. I'm just saying in general. If somebody wanted. To figure out well what's wrong, my actions will mm-hmm. speak louder than my words. In most cases, because if I'm just coming back home, let's say I'm just well in general, because like a lot of stuff that be happening to you be internal. So it's like as is it sounds like a good thing to do, but on my standpoint, on my end, when I'm going through that with you, is like it could be anything because you so inside your own head a lot to where it'd be like, well, my actions, but it, these are your actions. Not paying attention close enough. I almost cussed out. I almost cussed out. <laughs> Bruh, well, so, okay, so what that what does a blank stare mean when you just like this? That means something. I mean, I know something's wrong. I, I'm a I'm a know when something's wrong. I can feel it at this point. But I mean, what else can a person get from that? But here's the thing: he be wanting to fix everything, and not everything need to be fixed at a certain point. Now when it she comes right, to she me, she right, she right, like, she right. I be having, because, like I said, I am, even though I'm in a relationship and I am choosing to be alone with my person, it's like I still do things the way I have done it. You know, Mm -hmm. I work out my problems. I deal with things internally, the process I go about it. And, you know... It may be wrong, it may be right, but that's how I get through Mm -hmm. things. And, you know, I don't need somebody to fix my problems. Right. I feel, and this is just my point of view, you know, I feel as though, yes, people can help you with your problems, but nobody can really fix your problems, you know. You need to work on fixing your own problems Mm -hmm. and figure out what your real problem is. Because, I mean, Mm -hmm. you may be sourcing help and you don't even know what your real problem is that part and and to couple on top of that and i I don't feel like what you're doing is bad and i and i say this because i feel like everybody has to have a sense of discernment for themselves but as for a partner you go to your helpmate because we're helpmates you go to your helpmate once you get i guess lost in that when you go in because it's not like every problem she got she don't talk to me about it our system now is like if it's one of the problems or one of those situations to where like i'm not needed for that moment she'll still keep me informed you know and she'll be like well you know this was going on i just didn't want to blah 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 you know and like we'll work through it but like if it gets to the point to where she really needs to like hey we need i need your help with something which is rare because she's a very i love that she's a very independent person 
but it's like it's not like I'm closed off. I don't want it to sound like, oh, uh, you know, I'm completely closed off or we just don't talk. No, no we have great communication. It's just that, you know, I had to fix. I, see, I come from a background of parents that's like my mom's like that. Like my mom is going to get in, your, my, especially my dad, too. They want to sit down and they want to talk with everything and fix, 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 fix. You know, but with her, she's like, well, she was like, that's a lot. But she's more in tune with herself. She's like, OK, I know how I am. I know how I'm feeling. I'm trying to figure this out. You know, we'll talk about it later, but let me at least get a sense of what I'm going through. Because sometimes, you know, as people, not even just her, as people will feel things or go through things and we don't necessarily understand what we're going through at the moment. And then once you figure it out, okay, now I can communicate. But that's going back to her understanding my love language too. You know, like words of affirmation is basically communication. It's like, I know for you to understand what I'm going through, I have to talk to you about it. I'm not in a state to talk about it right now. Let me get to that point and we can talk about it. You know, I'm not going I'm not going to keep no crazy secrets or nothing from you. But at the end of the day, if this is how we function, you got to give me time to adjust to function that way. And it's like that the other way around, because I'm not the easiest person to deal with whenever I'm in that state either, because she talk about that. But what well, what am I like whenever like well, how do I get whenever I get upset, mad, blah, blah, blah. Like, how do you cope with me? Like being, I guess, not myself. Um, you I mean, your tunnel vision in general, but. Um, whenever you're like upset about things, it gets on another level. So, you know, it's kind of just pulling you out of that zone to just realize, you know, yes. And tunnel vision, I feel as though there is, when it comes to most things, there is no good or bad. Because tunnel vision could be very good. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just when you get so caught on one thing, it can just almost be unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to like pull yourself back a little bit to realize there is a wider view and there are different tunnels. Right. So, you know, I think I just, I hope in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. You do. I, I mean, to me, you do a good job. It's like you could, you may not pinpoint exactly what I might need at the moment, but. I need to switch that on the computer. Um, but it's like when you do figure it out, you know how to, you know how to like kind of. I mean, we kind of do it both with each other. We may have trouble trying to figure out what that person is going through at the moment, but once we realize what's going on, we get to have a better chance, or we come up with a plan to okay, how can I move this person out of this mindset, or how can I help this person cope or deal with the situation, or even help them even fix the situation if need be to move on from it. Yeah. You know, because not everything. I don't know, y'all. It's like you gotta. Even though we don't like to, most people don't like to go through stuff in relationships, it's like you got to go through stuff. And you got to let them go through stuff because, we, like you said earlier, people are constantly changing and growing. Mm-hmm. And you can't grow without boundaries and contrasts and all these obstacles in a way. Like if life stays comfortable and the same for you throughout, you're going to be the same person you was last year, which is not good because we need to evolve as humans. We need to move forward yeah. I scientifically. Think, I think people forget about the idea of, even when you're in a relationship, you're growing individually. Mm-hmm. You're also growing together, together, but you're growing individually as well. Mm-hmm. And some people, you can't focus on either one too much. You have to. It kind of has to be a natural thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like you know, if you're too focused on the relationship growing and you forget about yourself. You could get lost in that relationship. Yeah. And if you're too focused on yourself getting, evolving, you know, then the relationship kind of gets lost as well. So, you know, there is a balance. And there is no formula to it. So it's That's like, the dope part about it, though. It's like we get to just go through life together. I, I feel like people put, thanks to social media, people put too much emphasis on there's a specific way our relationship has to go in order to be successful. A successful relationship for us is not what it's going to be for y'all and y'all partners. That's just, that's just not how it's going to be. It's like we do things that's unorthodox to most people, but that's what works for us. You know, like that's what we decided to be together. We decided to really try to do this thing like and really get through it for the rest of our lives. So that means I have to alter certain things or come in or have a commonality between us about certain things in order to move forward. Because if not, if we just don't, if we, because we both can be very stubborn. Like, there's been plenty of times where we honestly could have broke up. But it's like, you know, it's like the love that we have for each other. You know, the decision that we know that we made for each other. And like, just, I don't know, it's like, I'm not, me personally, it's like, and I know she feel the same way, but you know, just me saying what I'm saying now. It's like, 
there's not too much that'll make me leave. You know, it's like, well, for her, you know, all y'all other, you know, other people that's on here that I probably didn't talk to, I'm gone for a reason. But it's like that, just being real. But, you know, it's like when you find somebody that's worth it, you know, like people are like, oh, well, she's worth it and blah, 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 blah. Like, no, when you really find somebody that's worth it, like you'll go through what you need to go through healthily, not toxic foolishness that, that, equates to just disaster i'm talking about like a real loving full of potential love brimming like relationship it's worth it go through the ups and downs go through the more and then to me that brought us even closer together yeah like understand because like like i said before how can you truly love somebody or feel safe enough to or feel safe enough to make the decision to love somebody wholeheartedly and you haven't seen their ugly side right because i want to see what you look like on a real mad day no can food. i can i handle that you know, so it's like, and we didn't both seen each other's like really like, man, you like like really to that point. So it's like, I mean, we didn't see it. It's like, all right, I still love you. I still want to be here. What are we gonna do? And we just been moving forward since. So I mean, me personally, I give my relationship a triple A S double X A plus plus plus. You know, but you know, now everybody can't have it like this. But it is what it is. People just be jealous at the end of the day. <laughs> but we going unless you want you want to ask something you want to talk about because it's time for us to wrap this up. You told me fifteen minutes. She ready to go. All right, because we got some Young Justice to watch. And we got some, uh, man, we got some more cinema rolls. We got a cinema rolls? Oh, well, we're going we gonna to do something. But um, we normally end it with our affirmations. I say it on my end. Y'all say it on y'all end. It's not like the part at the beginning for all the new people I'm seeing up in here. It's not like the one we did at the beginning. It's I say something and then you say it on your end. The whole point of the ending is to bring it all together in unity. So if I say I am wealthy. On your end, you say, I am wealthy. Because as we're coming together and we're putting our faith and our information together, things happen that much more quickly. All right. I am wealthy. I am wealthy. <laughs> I am loving. I am loving. I receive love. I receive love. I am able to give love. I am able to give love. I am healing. I am healing. <laughs> She's sick, y'all. Don't make no, don't. She's sick right now. She's just a little under the weather. So for her to be saying that, how she said that, that could come off some type of way. Oh, uh, I am happy. I am happy. I am letting go. I am letting go. And I am going to have a great day. And I am going to have a great day. I cannot day. stand you. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Love y'all, man. I'm glad y'all tuned in. We had some really good numbers today. Um, we're not going live tomorrow. I know I've been trying to go live on Sundays, but me having to wake up and then go play at church at nine is not happening. So Sundays, hopefully, I keep going on Saturdays. We'll see what's going on. But you know, Saturdays is our taboo days, extra days. But Sunday is a no, so y'all can catch us Monday at eight fifteen in the morning, and I'll be in the same spot. Hashtag live with Brian, and I'm gonna put the link in the comment uh, section as well. I have a YouTube going now. The podcast is officially up. Everything is being up, uh, uploaded via SoundCloud. We're going to have everything on Apple Music. Um, we're going to be on Spotify. We're going to be on all the Deezer. We're going to be on all the streaming platforms. So just give me a second. I'm almost done with everything, but all that stuff should be uploaded by the end of this month so far and, and moving forward. I love you guys. We on Go Mode as Deontay and uh, Peace and Grease. We love y'all. Catch y'all later.